Hey everybody, Alex Terrace here at healthhacksreview.com. So in this video, I'm going to conclusively prove if these heat lamp near-fred bulbs are actually therapeutic for you. And to accomplish this, I'm going to stick to objective data, okay? Not subjective, theoretical, convincing arguments or logic. What we're actually going to do is use a very high-end piece of equipment, a device, a testing device, that actually measures the therapeutic efficacy of different devices that are emitting infrared. Now the device that I'm going to use is something that's been used in the category or field known as photobiomodulation. And that basically in that field, they're studying things like the near-infrared spectrum mainly over the last 20 years to see how it's therapeutic when it actually is penetrating tissue. Now this touches on the main issue that a lot of, uh, well, I should say certain sauna companies, and there's just other products out there talking about near infrared types of heat lamps or sometimes even halogen heat lamps where we're not exactly too clear on how does that compare to therapeutic lasers and light emitting diodes or LEDs. So what I've seen people get very confused on especially in the sauna industry as near-infrared saunas come out and even full spectrum to that extent is some of these companies claim certain therapeutic benefits but they're referencing those benefits to studies that were done with lasers or LEDs okay not near-infrared bulbs for the most part so here's an example of different ones I'm testing here in my lab so we've kind of got all the main common brands and I'm testing with what is referred to as a beam meter, okay? So this is a beam meter from Thor Labs. That's T-H-O-R. I'll put it in the description of the video so you can look it up. It's a well-known company that's been producing LED and laser devices, therapeutic devices, for a long time. And these are the devices that are actually used to measure the amount of energy in the near infrared spectrum from 400 nanometers to 1100 nanometers. And how many milliwatts is how we measure that therapeutic energy. So one important thing to know is there's actual organizations, not just NASA's research, but a lot of research out there um, that points to and help, has helped design therapeutic protocols with these types of devices, which specifically says how many joules of ener energy per centimeter squared on your tissue is needed to give you certain health benefits. And so what we've seen in those protocols, those guidelines, dosage guidelines, is that we're needing at least minimum 40 to 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared of near infrared to actually have some therapeutic benefit. And remember I said minimum. There's a lot of studies that have also come out over years now that are pointing to things like 9,000 milliwatts is really where you want to be. So we're really seeing a lot of research in later times point to much higher power as better. But let's see. So what I have here is the bulb already plugged in, 250 watt bulb. And we have the beam meter. We actually have Thor Lab software at the top. It's measuring in real time how many milliwatts per centimeter squared. Okay? And we're actually looking at that bottom right hand number. Okay? So if we look at that bottom right hand number, we'll see a 10. 14, 10, you see that number there? That's the number we're looking at. That's milliwatts per centimeter squared. Remember, that is the number we want to correlate with health benefits. So at a distance here of, I'd say, two feet away from the meter, which is the safe distance for this type of heat lamp, you don't want to be any closer because it can cause skin damage, we're getting about 15 milliwatts. So this is actually well under the minimum dosage requirements that, we, that are basically paired up with actual clinical research. So right here, this is con 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 conclusive evidence, it's a tricky word, that basically is pointing out that, sure, is a near-infrared lamp therapeutic? Does it produce infrared? Of course, it produces infrared. It can be therapeutic. I'm not saying it, it's not, but I am pointing out that if we're talking specifically about near-infrared and how therapeutic this is for a near-infrared um, you know, application, then we're basically seeing that it's under the minimums in terms of what we found was therapeutic in studies. 
So if anybody has any issues or confusion about this sort of test that I've run with very high-end equipment, which is exactly what's used in the photobiomodulation industry, you're welcome to leave your questions below in the video or contact me on my website, healthhacksreview.com. And it's up to you, seeing this sort of data information, uh, whether you want to pursue uh, using a near-infrared bulb as a therapeutic device for your potential health goals or health conditions. Anyways, thanks for watching, and that's it for now. Tune in for next time.